Hello and welcome to CX Today. My name is Charlie. I am the senior editor here and I'm thrilled to be joined by John Ortiz, a technology sales manager at Mirek. John, thanks very much for joining me. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing well. No, thanks. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's good to see you again. Good to be back. But yeah, no, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Appreciate it. How are you today? Yeah, well, good. And I'm uh, excited to uh, share with everyone uh, three demos that you've created for us, uh, showcasing uh, three different use cases of generative AI within the contact center quality assurance. Yeah. Uh, but before we quickly go into those, I think it's important to note that each use case is applied each use case, sorry, applies generative AI to an automated quality assurance system. So before we go into the demos, I don't know, John, if you could maybe talk a little bit um, about what uh, automated quality uh, assurance system is and how it, how it helps contact centers to overcome some of the traditional uh, pain points uh, of contact center quality assurance. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. That sounds good. So I would say, simply put, AutoQA is a contact center technology that allows you to automatically evaluate your agents based on some predefined scorecards, uh, right? Like um, manual QA or, or QA is typically a manual process or historically has been, right? There will be a human reviewer who will manually listen to calls and then score them. So um, that process is super tedious, takes forever, and it's not very effective. Right. So that's where auto QA comes into play. It'll use AI to automatically evaluate and score 100 percent of your calls. Right. And uh, there, there are some kind of serious, I guess, you know, downfalls that come with manual QA that auto QA will help with overcoming in the contact center. Um, a couple of those. Number one, I would say, is like limited visibility into your, your call volume, which kind of leads to poor agent performance. And uh, what I mean by that is whenever you're doing manual QA, uh, because it's so uh, manual, so tedious, um, and contact centers take thousands of calls every day, right? So uh, if you're doing your manual reviews, you can really only evaluate about 1% of your calls, right? So that means, you know, with 99% of your calls, you can't really say with any level of certainty if your agents are saying and doing the right things. Like, uh, you know, are they following their call scripts? Are they capitalizing on uh, upsell or cross-sell opportunities? Are they remaining compliant? Right, so that's a, a huge issue. So that's what AutoQA definitely helps with, you know, getting a visibility into 100% of your calls. Um, you know, and again, you know, if you're only evaluating a really, really small subset of your calls, uh, your agents, you're, you're going to struggle with um, identifying where they're struggling in terms of their performance. So AutoQA helps with overcoming that. Um, the whole manual QA process is not scalable because, again, I mean, even if you had one QA analyst for every single agent, you still wouldn't be able to evaluate every every call. So it's not scalable. So it's another thing that auto QA helps with. Um, and that's one of the things I, mean, I would say. But like ultimately, what it leads to is it's it's going to help your contact center with increasing your uh, you know your your customer experience, improve customer satisfaction, and you know, ultimately it's going to you know, help with like increasing revenue and customer retention, all the good things that come with you know a really well trained staff um, in, in terms of your your agents. So I would say those are some of the main challenges of you know what uh, Auto QA helps uh, you know kind of those contact centers overcome in the, the contact center. Mm. Yeah, it's a really great technology. It's been around for a little while already. And as you said, kind of it helps in so many different areas in terms of pinpointing coaching gaps, uh, highlighting uh, broken processes, and also yeah. establishing more of a fair culture um, mm -hmm. around kind of QA. A lot of the times an agent may think, oh, this analyst has a bias against me or something like that. But with an automated yeah. score, it kind of removes those feelings. And, and yeah, so lots of, so lots of great aspects of a Q, uh, automated QA system. But with yeah. generative AI, there's a step, there's a chance to take it even further. And I know at Mirek, that's exactly um, what you're doing. And the first demo that we have um, is of an additional context window within uh -huh. the auto QA solution, which we'll see a demo of shortly. Um, yeah. Before we go into that demo, John, I don't know if you could quickly you know, give us a, a quick little rundown about what this is and how it will impact the accuracy of auto QA. Yeah, for sure. And, and just really quick on one thing you said back there about the, the agents being offended by maybe some managers that might be favoring some other agents. That's definitely something that happens. And that's a huge frustration, right? So that can kind of lead to a, um, just low agent morale and more turnover. Turnover. So that's just another thing that AutoQA helps with. But anyway, to, to answer your question, so go, going back to the, uh, the additional context window. Um, but yeah, we're, we're definitely trying to obviously improve the accuracy and the consistency of the results that you get from auto QA, because that's one of the big kind of uh, things about it. Like, you know, how accurate really is it? So we recently added this uh, additional context window, and this is a portion of the, the auto QA scorecards. Um, 
So basically what it does is it allows you to kind of elaborate or, or provide context to the AI about the questions on your scorecards, right? Um, now, this is a really subtle change, but it's, it's a huge improvement. It has huge implications for the accuracy of auto QA. Um, and the reason why I'll explain here, because, you know, with manual scorecards, almost every single question contains some level of subjectivity to, to the question, right? Um, and I'll, I'll give you an example. So um, one question I always see is like, did the agent greet the caller appropriately, right? So the AI doesn't know what your explanation of appropriately or your definition of appropriately is, right? So if you put questions like this on your manual QA scorecards, the AI is really going to struggle with answering those. Um, well, maybe not struggle, but it's going to give you inconsistent results, right? Because if you're not defining things that are subjective, the AI is going to make its own kind of interpretation of that, right? So that's where this additional context window comes into play, right? Um, now, whenever our customers are building out their scorecards within our platform, they can write their question, but then they can also provide some additional description or additional context for all those questions. So you can give that to the AI. And what that's going to do is it's going to help the AI understand, you know, specifically what you mean by any type of subjective terminology. And it's going to drastically increase the, uh, the accuracy and, and definitely the consistency in which you're seeing in the results. So again, I mean, it's just a really, really small uh, change. You know, now whenever you write your question, you can add a description, right? It's just a fancy way of saying that, but it's, we've seen firsthand, it's, it's had some really amazing results in terms of, again, the accuracy and consistency. So we're really excited about that. And uh, yeah. That's that's basically it. That's a quick explanation on what it is and how it works. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really great in terms of, as you say, removing that subjectivity uh, within QA criteria because that is that is a big problem. Uh, oh, yeah. But but yeah, I mean, it's a great rundown. And let's let's take a look at it now in action. Sounds good. All right. So in this video, I'm going to give you a really quick overview of the uh, the additional context window within the MyRec application uh, for the QA scorecards. So. From my experience with uh, with QA manual and auto QA, um, a majority of the questions on everyone's scorecards are subjective in nature. Right? So I'll show you what I mean by that. And this is a, a perfect example here in this question. So the question is, did the agent greet the caller appropriately? Right? It's a fair question, but the AI doesn't know what your definition of appropriately is. Right? It can vary from company to company. Right? So unless you're able to provide the AI with some additional context about what you mean by appropriately, the AI is going to struggle to provide you with some consistent results on that question and any questions like that, right? So that's where the additional context window comes into play. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So in this description portion, uh, what this description or context window does is it gives you the ability to define the subjective you know, portions or, or guess any type of sub subjectivity within your, your scorecard questions, right? So I'll show you what I mean. So again, the, the question here is, did the agent greet the caller appropriately? So we're going to define appropriately for the AI. So the description says the agent must thank the customer for calling, ask them for their ID number and repeat the ID number back to the customer. Right. So what we're doing there is now we're taking that appropriately, that subjective turn, and we're making it objective. Right. What we mean by appropriately is the agent must thank the caller for calling. They must ask them for their ID number and they must repeat that ID number back to the customer. Right. So those are all things that we can measure and we can quantify. Right. So this context window is a really subtle change, but this is going to have a huge impact on the overall accuracy and consistency of the results that you get from from auto QA. And, you know, we've seen the results firsthand and it's, it's been pretty remarkable. So that's a quick overview on it. Um, you know, let me know if you have any questions. Excellent. So that was uh, the additional context window. And now let's move on to our second use case, which is uh, the Mirek AI prompt designer. John, I don't know if you could give us again a quick introduction as to what this is and how it will impact the overall effectiveness of auto QA. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. So uh, just like that uh, context window, uh, the prompt designer within MyRec, it's another recent addition and it's uh, going to have a really large impact on uh, just the overall effectiveness of using uh, generative AI in your contact center. So in short, the prompt designer, it's basically a sandbox environment within the, the platform where you can build um, and you can test, you can iterate and refine uh, different AI prompts. Right. And, and this is super important with the, the MyRec platform because as an end user of this platform, you have full control over an AI prompt system, right? So you can ask the AI to extract whatever type of data that you want from your calls, right? Um, like for example, if you're maybe a life insurance contact center, some things that you need to 
learn from every person that you speak with is you need to ne- learn like what's their date of birth, you know, what's their medical history, uh, you know, height, weight, are they a smoker, you know, all that stuff. So uh, that's just one example. You can ask the AI, so, hey, like, you know, build me a prompt. I want you to extract all these things from this call, right? So in the prompt designer, you can essentially build this prompt. You can select some of your or one of your calls for experiment, whichever one you want. Build the prompt, hit test, see what results you get, and then kind of go back and refine, right? So it's a really powerful tool because, again, as uh, an end user of MyRec, you have full control of this prompt system. I mean, you can literally ask it to, you know, extract whatever kind of info you want. You can ask it to write a poem about a song, literally kind of whatever you want. So um, it's it's really important, though, to, to have a tool like this, though, because, I mean, if you've ever kind of tinkered around with, like, a chat GPT or any kind of... Uh, you know, generative AI tools like that, you'll know that whenever you're making your prompts, at least initially, it always kind of requires like a, a second kind of, okay, I need to you know, rewrite that to get some response or get the response that I'm looking for, right? So it's really important to have that tool in there, especially if you have full control of an AI prompt system. And in terms of how this affects uh, auto QA, so um, kind of going into the same thing, I mean, every single question in an auto QA scorecard is essentially a prompt for AI, right? You're asking the AI to look at something. So Having this sandbox environment is really important because you can, again, you can actually, we built a, a kind of a newer portion of the prompt designer. It's specifically designed for auto QA. You can import your scorecard to this and then you can select a call for experiment and then you will see your question. You'll see the context window. So you can edit each question, edit all the context and hit test and see what results you get. It'll show you the score that you get for the, the scorecard. It'll show you if it was a pass or fail, like everything, just like a, a normal evaluation. So it's just a really great environment for you to kind of test and iterate your, your AI prompts to ensure that they're getting the results that you want. And then when you're happy, you can put those prompts into production and then you're off to the races. So it's a really, really cool feature and uh, another thing that we're really excited about. So I think that's a quick explanation on it. Yeah, so it's another feature that looks great too. So let's again, yeah. check it out uh, in action. All right, so MyRec Prompt Designer. I'm just gonna jump straight into this and show you how it works, uh, but it gives you the ability to test out AI prompts against your call data. All right, so I'm gonna select a call here for experiment, and we're gonna build out an AI prompt until I'm happy with the results it's giving me. So in this example, it's a customer calling Krispy Kreme to order some donuts. So let's assume this is our contact center. We uh, you know, take donut orders. So maybe on every call, I wanna know which uh, donuts my customers are ordering. So I can build this, uh, this prompt for AI. Tell me which donuts the customer ordered, and then I can hit test and see what results I get. Um, as you can see, the response, it tells me that the order uh, for this customer was some blueberry donuts, glazed donuts, and red velvet donuts. Uh, but maybe I want to see the response in a particular format, right? So I can come back up to this prompt here, and I can adjust it, and I can tell the AI to specifically put it in a format towards where it shows me the, the donuts they ordered and the amount that they ordered. So, right, I come down here, click test again, and now you can see that the AI gave me the response in the way that I requested. Now I'm happy with this uh, prompt, so I can use this on all of my calls. So really, really cool. And um, what's also very, very helpful is we made kind of a separate prompt designer specifically for auto QA. So what this allows you to do is you can build your scorecard and you can then select a call for experiment and you can run that scorecard against the call to see which um, see what results you get. So as you can see here, you have the evaluation form we looked at earlier. You can see the questions, you can see the additional context window here. So now I can, again, scroll down here after I insert the scorecard and hit test, and I can see what results I get from the, the AI, right? So it's going to tell me again, did, you know, did they pass, did they fail? What uh, were the responses for, for each question? So incredibly helpful, right? Because, you know, you're most likely going to have to refine the questions, refine the context windows when you're building these, um, these scorecards out. So this is a perfect sandbox environment to do that. Each of these features are incredibly powerful and helpful for, you know, kind of uh, customizing your, your MyRec instance, especially with the generative AI. So that was the MyRec AI prompt designer. And now let's move straight on to our third and final use case, and that is Sentiment Analysis 3.0. So John, I don't know what you can tell us about this next generation of Sentiment Analysis and how it will bolster also QA in the contact center. Yeah, for sure. That's a great question. Um, so just, uh, you know, sentiment analysis has been around for a long time, right? Just like auto QA has been. But uh, sentiment analysis and auto QA have both been drastically improved by uh, generative AI. So I'll, I'll kind of explain here the evolution of sentiment analysis. It'll make more sense. Uh, so when it first started in contact centers, sentiment analysis, it was keyword based. So uh, end users would have to make like exhaustive lists of, you know, good and bad words. Like here's my 500 lists long of my, my good words. Here's my 500 word list of my bad words. 
right? And if, uh, you know, the, the customers or the agents on the calls would say any of those good or bad words, that's kind of what would attribute it to the positive or the negative sentiment, right? And this was limited because obviously it didn't take into uh, account any type of context, right? So if someone said the word great, but they're being like sarcastic, like great, man, like they, that would kind of attribute to a positive sentiment. Right. And obviously you, you can't think of all the good and bad words too. I mean, so it's just a really manual process, takes a lot of configuration and it's, and it can be inaccurate. Right. Um, then from there, it went on to sentiment analysis 2.0. It was kind of using like simple language models. Right. So it wasn't keyword based anymore. Um, you didn't really need to configure a list of good and bad words. It was a pre-trained model. Um, however, it kind of similar to the previous model, it would, um, kind of calculate a sentiment score based on, uh, uh, a total of like the, the good and bad phrases or words said in the entire, um, the call, right? So it was, it was more accurate because it could take into account some context, but at the end of the day, it wasn't looking at the entire com conversation, right? It was just looking like here in this conversation, I saw 10 positive sentences and three negative sentences. So I'll mark this call as positive. And the reason why this was limited really, because I mean, a thing that happens all the time in contact centers, I'll give an example, like uh, a caller can call in that's super frustrated and, you know, maybe 90% of the call is bad, but at the end of the call, the, the agent's able to, you know, help the customer and kind of fix whatever issue they had. So this previous version of sentiment analysis would label that call as negative because most of it was bad. However, at the end of the call, it was a positive call because the agent helped them and the customer was happy. Right. So that was the second uh, version of sentiment analysis. And now we're here to the generative AI. Um, this one's super powerful uh, because it can take into account the entire context of the conversation. So it's much, much smarter. So that, that same situation I just explained where 90% of the call was bad and 10% was good. New sentiment analysis can pick up on that. Right. So that's a really high level overview of how it's kind of uh, evolved now. And, um, you know, previously sentiment analysis was really kind of limited, limited to, I mean, you were looking at the call and evaluating it for the emotional tone, right? Was this a positive call or was this uh, a negative call? And that's really all you, you could use it for, right? Um, and one common misconception too that I'll point out about sentiment analysis in the previous versions, and this happened on almost every sales or demos call, demo call that I had, right? Um, people would think that sentiment analysis was used to evaluate kind of like agent performance. They, they would think like, you know, if this was, an, if I see a negative call, that means my agent did a bad job, which was completely just not the case, right? So now with this new version of sentiment analysis, you can actually use it uh, for more than just uh, analyzing the emotional tone. You can actually use this now to analyze the, the end results of calls. So in terms of how it bolsters auto QA, so now, like the, the whole purpose, I would say, or one of the main purposes of auto QA is you're using it to evaluate the agents on their, their lead indicators, right? Like, are they saying, and are they doing the right things? Whereas now with sentiment analysis, you can use this to um, analyze the lag indicators. Like you can use it to analyze the end results. And the way you can do that with gen AI sentiment analysis is you're in control of the prompts again, right? So if you want sentiment analysis to mean one thing, uh, you can simply just change the prompt. Like for example, in this call, I want you to mark this as a positive call. If it, like, let's say it's a sales call, right? Mark this call as positive if my agent is able to close new business and then vice versa. If they're not able to close, mark it as negative, right? So now instead of, you know, using sentiment analysis to solely focus on the emotional tone, we can use it to analyze the, again, the lag indicators. Like, are we getting the results that we want? So auto QA is covering lead indicators, uh, sentiment analysis covering lag indicators, and we can put those together. And now it's, it's a really, really powerful tool. So I would say that was a very long answer, but that's kind of how like it's evolved and that's how it kind of bolsters auto QA. And uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'll say. I'll leave it there. <laughs> no, yeah, that, that, that's great, John. And I was in one of those contact centers in about 2016 that did create a huge long list of positive and yeah, negative, yeah. also neutral words as well. Yeah, yeah to work out sentiment. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy how in eight years, yeah. how much the technology has evolved. Mm -hmm. and let's yeah, let's take a look at this sentiment analysis 3.0 uh, in right. action. Sounds good. All right, last but not least, a Gen AI uh, based sentiment analysis. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can customize this so that you're using sentiment analysis to look at end results uh, for your, your contact center's calls. So we'll look at customer service example first. So basically what we're telling the sentiment analysis here is to score the call positive if the customer was satisfied with uh, the end result of the call, um, and then vice versa, score the conversation as negative if the customer remained upset or frustrated at the end of the call. 
All right, so let's look at an example of this in action. So uh, this call uh, is a perfect example. The, the customer called into Target because they were upset that their order was being delivered to the wrong address, right? So most of the call was negative. However, at the end of the call, if I scroll down here, you can see that the agent was able to help the customer. I really appreciate that, you're a lifesaver, right? So we go back and look at the sentiment scoring. You can see that the sentiment analysis picked up on that based on the prompt we use. Right. It scored the call positive because at the end of the call, the agent was able to help the customer. Right. So in previous versions of sentiment analysis, this call probably would have been scored negative. But now that we're using Gen AI, it uses the entire context of the conversation. So it gives you an accurate result. Right. So now let's look at a, a sales example. So in this call, um, an agent was reaching out to a customer to offer them a new iPhone, right? trying to get them to to buy or purchase a new iPhone. And um, I want my contact center sentiment analysis to score calls positive if my agents are able to close new business, right? So that's what I did here in this prompt. So I adjusted it and said, score the conversation as positive when the agent's able to sell a new product and then vice versa. If they can't close, negative call, right? So I can go down here and I can hit test on this new sentiment prompt. And uh, just to kind of you know show you and confirm in the, the transcript here, you can see that the customer did order it. They're excited about getting a new iPhone. And the sentiment analysis reading is, is showing just that, right? It's giving us a very positive sentiment score because the agent was able to close this customer on a new iPhone, right? So again, you can now use sentiment analysis to kind of focus on end results of calls, right? Not only can you focus on how customers are feeling, but you can customize sentiment analysis to you know, make calls um, or, or make the sentiment readings, again, more accurate to your particular business or your use cases. So that was it, sentiment analysis 3.0. Uh, our final demo of the day. Um, and it's been, you know, lots of really great uh, Gen AI capabilities on display. Um, but I guess the lingering question for everybody watching is kind of what is the process uh, for my contact center to adopt Mirek, Auto QA, and all of those uh, capabilities that we've seen? So, John, I don't know kind of what, what, what is the answer to that question? Yeah, no, I, I got you. It's pretty straightforward and kind of similar to, I would say, a lot of other vendors, right? We got to, you know, do a discovery call. Let's make sure that your contact center is a fit, right? And if you are, uh, we, we always recommend doing a, a free trial. So um, we'll we'll build you a, a custom MioRec instance um, and kind of hook that up to your, your voice platform. Right? And then we'll let you test out the, the platform uh, against your real call data uh, for a, a month, sometimes a little bit longer if, if needed, right? So that way you can really prove it out to make sure it's working. You're getting the results that you want. We'll help you... Um, we will help you build out your first scorecards, right, in the, the platform to make sure those are working. We'll help you with maybe adjusting any AI prompts to maybe make sure you're you're getting call summaries that you like, or we're extracting type you know, specific insights, you know, from, from your, I guess, company specific insights, right? So long story short, do a free trial. We'll help you set it up and we'll be with you throughout the entirety of the trial for any type of configuration, right? So, um, and after the trial is over, if, if you're happy with the results, obviously, um, then we can build you a production environment. We'll move into contract negotiations and all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, I mean, just do the trial if you, if you like it, um, then we'll, we'll help you kind of, again, build out your, your, uh, your real instance. And then, uh, you know, after the, the customers are up and running at that point, uh, we, we stay kind of working with them, you know, throughout the entirety of the, the life when they're, they're using MyRec, right? I mean, we, we do a, a lot of product upgrades. So we'll obviously, you know, every time there's an upgrade, we'll let them know or kind of add that to the system if that's something that we're adding. Um, but yeah, I, mean, it's, I think it's a pretty straightforward process, right? I mean, just, you know, let us know if, if you're interested. We'll, you know, see if you're a good candidate, free trial, and then move into the rest. But yeah, and, and I would say, you know, if you if you want a, a demo or if you're looking to learn more about any of this stuff, you know, feel free to, to let us know. Um, and we have a lot of great resources on our website too. I mean, we have an actual demo instance up there, so you can go in there and see what it, it looks like for yourself if you just want to test it out. Uh, we have like ROI calculators for um, auto QA, auto call summaries, all the AI features. So there's just a ton of resources on the website itself, including pricing. But yeah, if you're looking to learn more, like you've you know gone through the website and you've got all the information that you're looking for, but you have some other questions, and you know feel free to, to contact me or contact anyone from the, the MioRx sales team, and we'll we'll be happy to help. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Awesome. Yeah. And what I'll do for everyone too, is I'll leave a, a link to the Mirac website in the description so they can check out some of those uh, great resources that you've uh, mentioned. But I think that's a great place to end today's chat, John. And it's been fantastic to get your insight, uh, not yeah. only on uh, kind of this call, but through all the demos as well. So thank you very much uh, for joining me today.
Yeah, no, for sure. I appreciate you having me again. It's always super fun to, to jump on these calls with you. So I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, I hope you have a, a great rest of your day. Thanks, Charlie. Absolutely. You too, John. And uh, I hope all of our viewers have a great rest of the day too. That's Bye right. Yeah. <laughs>